What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show how to set up Resident Evil Outbreak file 1 and 2 on your Windows computer using PCSX2. This is a follow-up video to my guide on making your own Outbreak file 1 and 2 server. If you haven't seen that one yet, check it out in the description below. I'll be showing this using Windows 10, but it will work just fine on Windows 11 as well. A shout out to Ollie the Zombie 13 who originally shared this all-in-one game pack. I've added some extra pieces in to give some more options. Anyhow, the first thing you'll want to do is download the game pack from the link I have in the description below. So in this case, I have it here. And you will need 7-Zip installed on your machine in order to go ahead and extract this. So if you don't have 7-Zip yet, I will have a link for it down below. But just go ahead and select the version of Windows that you have. Generally speaking, this day and age, you probably have a 64-bit version of Windows 10 and Windows 11 being 64-bit only, you would just go ahead and download this guy here. And then it's a very simple process of installing just a few clicks and you're, you're good to go. And so once you have 7-Zip installed, then all you have to do is go ahead and locate the 7-Zip file, right-click on it, go to 7-Zip, and then you can do Extract here. I've already done it here, so here we are. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and install the Visual C redistributable pack here, and you just go ahead and run this, and then just go through the very simple process of just accepting the user agreement and hitting next, and then you're basically done. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to go ahead and show that portion. The next thing we'll want to do, so if you're going to go ahead and use a PlayStation three controller for instance like I'm going to do in my case you're, you're going to need the drivers installed for either a wired connection or for a Bluetooth connection one thing to throw out there is that if you are going to go ahead and set up the Bluetooth portion the Bluetooth capability of your machine is stuck to the controller so you will not be able to connect any other devices via Bluetooth to your machine if you go through with the Bluetooth configuration process. So in this case, I just recommend using a USB cable connection with the controller. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and kick off SCP Toolkit Setup. Go ahead and agree. You can leave this as is, hit next. Since we're just going to do a wired connection, I'm not going to go ahead and check anything else here, but there is that option for the Bluetooth pair utility, but I won't show that. So we'll hit install and yes. And then you'll see a whole bunch of stuff here and you may be startled by a weird old school console noise. So go ahead and click in this green section here where it says run driver installer and hit yes. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to uncheck install Bluetooth driver. And since I'm using a PS3 controller, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the DualShock 4 driver. And then we need to go ahead and choose the controller we're going to install. So I'll click this here. And then if we scroll down here, then this guy right here, PlayStation 3 controller, and then just go ahead and click install. And you may see all these pop-ups happening down here. Just be patient. Sometimes this can hang for a little bit. And in this case, I already have the driver installed, so everything is fine here. So we can go ahead and exit out of this. I would recommend at this point, once SCP Toolkit is installed with the controller driver, to go ahead and reboot the machine and then continue right on. So next, what we're going to do is we will go ahead and double click on Outbreak. We're going to go to Config, Controllers, Plugin Settings, and then we're going to go ahead and select Pad 1 DualShock 2, hit OK. That's just going to go ahead and assign the key bindings to our controller. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Config, Dev 9, Plugin Settings, and then for the Enable Ethernet section, this should already be checked for you. Click on Options, and then in here, you can leave the top portion as is. The adapter cannot be auto. Go ahead and drop that down to what your network adapter is and click this. And then for the IP of your Outbreak server, you would go ahead and put in here. So in my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and do 192.168.60.232, hit apply. And this next step is going to be optional, but it greatly reduces the load times of the game and also load times of going between rooms in the game. 
So if you don't create this virtual hard drive option, then your load times jumping between rooms is somewhere between six to eight seconds instead of two to three seconds. So, so I highly recommend doing this if you have the space for it. So what you can do is you can do enable hard disk drive, go to options, leave the image path as is there. The hard disk drive size, we need it to be 20 gigs and hit apply. So basically, if you've got 20 gigs of free space on your machine, then this is the ideal way to go. With file one and file two installed, it's somewhere around 12 gigs in size. There may be a way in PCSX2 to fine tune the amount of space that's actually delegated out. But for this tutorial, we'll just stick with the 20 gigs. Go ahead and hit apply. And so since this game pack already has the ISOs we need and everything else configured in here, Let's go ahead and first click on CD DVD ISO selector and let's drop it down to Outbreak ISO, aka File 1. Swap disk. What we're going to do real quick is let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go to Config, Video, Plugin Settings. And in here you can actually go ahead and modify your video configurations. If you have a dedicated graphics card in your machine, I do recommend selecting Direct 3D Hardware. You don't need a very beefy dedicated video card, but it helps. And you can go ahead and leave this as default hardware device. And then here you can go ahead and change up your resolution. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it as 1080. And then I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else as is, but you can certainly feel free to go in here, customize things, see how they run on your machine. And we'll hit OK. Let's go to System, Run Elf. And then if it doesn't default to the HDD folder here, just find it in the PCSX2 folder, which would be right here and then go to HDD, and then let's go ahead and open ps2loader.elf first. And if your game doesn't launch in full screen here, then just go ahead and hit the maximize button there. Go ahead and hit start for settings, and then we'll go ahead and click on settings, and then your settings should hopefully look exactly like this. If they don't, go ahead and change up the parameter that may be off. We'll just go ahead and back out of this and we will go ahead and hit exit. And then we can go ahead and close out of this. Next, let's go back to system, run elf, hdloader.elf open. And now it's going to say that the hard drive connected is not formatted. All data is going to be lost on the 20 gig virtual drive that we created. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and leave it up to the game itself to do the install. You could go ahead and install them in here, but I prefer doing it within the game itself. So we're going to go ahead and close out of this. And now just go to CD DVD ISO selector. We're going to start with file one to begin with. So we then go to system boot ISO fast. And if this pops up, just go ahead and hit yes. Let's start. Let's go down to HDD install. When the game data install is installed to the hard drive, you'll be able to play the game more comfortably. To install, you must have at least 1,024 megabytes of free space on the hard drive. Do you want to install? Yes. Since this is the English patched version of the game, some sections are going to show up still with Japanese text. Installation is complete. Press any button. And so now if we wanted to, we could do network play. We'll do next. Net file has been found. Will you load the net file? Yes. We'll do previous connection to use the last connection settings. Next. If you see this blank blue screen, 
just go ahead and hit O. And so for the first time, you want to go ahead and create an ID. So we'll go over to the right hand side to create the account. If this is toggled to Japanese text, go ahead and drop this down to A1. And we'll just go ahead and create an account ID of triple A. Hit start to get out. And password, I'll just do triple A also. And login. Login successful, enter lobbies. If for some reason it drops you back to the login screen, try it one more time. For this section, go ahead and go over to the right hand option. And then here we have to go ahead and enter a handle name in. So let's go ahead and drop it down to A1, and we'll just put in triple A, start. And then for here, we'll actually want to do the option to the left. And then now we are basically in, and you can just go ahead and select what you want here. We can do room list, area zero one. Select a free slot. And we can go ahead and name it triple A. And you can adjust all the stuff here. We'll go ahead and set it super easy here. And that looks fine. We'll hit finish. And we'll do start game. Now normally, obviously, you would wait for people to come in. I don't have anyone else connected to my server at the time, so. And then now the game launches. And so the key thing at this section is just showing off the door loading speeds. Anyhow, we can go ahead and close out of this. So I can go ahead and show you. We're basically just going to rinse and repeat the same thing with file 2. So we go to CD, DVD, ISO selector, select file 2. Swap disk, system, boot ISO fast, OK or yes. So press start button. Go down to HD install just like we did before. We'll go ahead and select yes and then just be patient. One thing to note is that there is this puzzle game you can go ahead and play here as it loads if you wanted to. And we can just go ahead and hit O for here. And now let's go to network play. Go ahead and hit next. Net file's been found. We can load the net file, yes. Press any button to continue. Previous connection. Next. Press O to continue. One thing to note is that the file one and file two servers don't share the same database. So you'll have to go ahead and create an account again here. And I'll just do triple A's again. Login. Enter lobbies. And then you have to set up the handle again. So drop it down to the English keyboard. And we'll just do triple A again. And the option to the left. And we'll just select this for free area. Free. Select a vacant room. I'll do triple A again. And we'll just hit finish. And then, like I said, since no one's actually playing on my server right now, I'm just going to do start game. Just to show off that load time here. Nice and fast. All right, so we can go ahead and close out of this here.
So that's all you have to do to get the PCSX2 in good working order to connect to your Resident Evil Outbreak servers. If you found this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel to keep up with all the guides I will be releasing in the next up and coming weeks. Also, please check out my channel for other interesting guides. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.